Greetings. Thank you all for tuning in for another video. I trust that you're glad to see me as I'm glad to see you. Please excuse the way my voice sounds. Recently, I've had some issues with that, but that's neither here nor there. I wanted to take this opportunity to review another book with you guys to share another wonderful book, a phenomenal book, in my opinion. And it is uh, very well known. It is a classic of Russian literature as well as world literature. Chances are that you have at least heard of it, if not read it yourself. And regardless of whether you've read it or not, whether you're familiar with it or not, I encourage everybody to stick around because this is not going to be some in-depth plot analysis or a uh, very mundane and boring strict book review in that sense. I'm merely going to be giving an informal take on my opinions, my ideas, and my key takeaways from reading this book. And it's not going to be complicated. I don't want to make rocket science out of it. I could easily talk about this book for an hour or longer, but that, would, that wouldn't be practical to um, my purposes in making this video in the first place. After all, the reason why I want to share this with, with everyone who, who may click on this video is because I think that this book is worth reading. I think that it is um, valuable insofar that it may help you in the same way that it's helped me, at least in terms of my perspective on life. And I say that because... I am the same person that I was before I read this book. However, I cannot understate the fact that I will never look at life the same uh, after reading it. <laughs> and so, that being said, um, there will be spoilers ahead. If you have not read the book, if that bothers you, it's probably best that you don't watch this video. However, again, I still encourage everybody to stick along for the ride. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce the book. We're going to be discussing Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Again, I said I didn't want to do an in-depth plot analysis, but I do have to reveal some of the story or general outline to give some context uh, to, the, to the key points that I want to make about this book. So just some general background. Um, this book takes place during uh, the mid-19th century in St. Petersburg, Russia. Okay. And the main character's name is Raskolnikov, the protagonist. His name is Raskolnikov. And Raskolnikov, he has, he has an interesting background. For one, he is intelligent. He is very intellectually oriented. He is very talented in his ability to, uh, to comprehend and also formulate ideas about life and human suffering. <laughs> but most of all, he has this this weird or odd tendency of juxtaposition. What I mean by that is he is simultaneously seen as a wretched scumbag scoundrel of a person, for lack of better words. And at the same time, he demonstrates this high proclivity for um, benevolence and kindness and generosity and lovingness. And so he's a very complicated fellow. And the reason why I, I leave with this point is because one of the one of the aspects of this book that I appreciated the most was that nothing was one dimensional, including the protagonist himself. And actually several other characters showed that share the same quality of being multifaceted. Um, they're not very superficial surface level characters. They're characters that are very complex and um, challenging to understand and to think about. And that's, in my opinion, it's very satisfying. But in addition to such characters, which were introduced to in this novel, the story itself and the content of it and what it's actually about, um, arguably a lot of different things. <laughs> the funny thing about it is that you will spend, in my opinion, you will spend more time thinking about what this book is trying to say rather than reading it, rather than actually reading it. At least that's what I found for me personally because it is so deep. And so that's another interesting point that I think is worth leading with is because if, um, if you're anticipating that you're going to read this purely for the sake of pleasure, entertainment, or enjoyment, it is pleasurable and entertaining and enjoyable to read, absolutely. But it is also not light reading. It is very deep. It is very profound and um, phenomenally moving. So with all of that out of the way, I wanted to delve right into the meat of this, what I think is um, some of the most memorable and impactful aspects of the book, at least for me personally. So beginning with this point, there are several themes in this book. In my opinion, actually one major theme, and then there are several sub-themes. And the main theme, I think, can be described like this. 
It is a theme that is very common to all of us, one that we are all well aware of. It is the theme of reaping what one sows. The idea that there are consequences to certain actions, consequences to certain circumstances. And it is beautifully indicated in the title itself, Crime and Punishment. You do something and then you have to reap the consequences of that action. Right? And so what we see in the book is the crime, which is referred to in the title, actually represents a mere fraction of the story. It is like that. It's a single scene. But the punishment which a lot of people automatically anticipate that there are legal consequences to that sort of thing, right? Like we immediately think of, um, you know, a crime being committed, and then if you get caught, there are legal consequences or repercussions. Well, it goes much more deeper than that, especially when you do something as horrendous as is described in this book. So Raskolnikov at some point makes up in his mind that he can murder. And so he murders. <laughs> he murders someone, and in the process, he ends up murdering two people. And what ends up happening basically is he goes for quite some time without being caught, right? He is, he's on the run and he's done a, uh, well, I wouldn't say a good job, but he's done an, ex he's done a, an okay job at not getting caught and not getting, getting found out, at least not immediately. <clears throat> and so the time between uh, him committing this crime and then eventually getting caught, which is at the very end of the novel um, there is a lot of punishment in the form of psychological and mental distress. Okay, now this is super important because this is what makes uh, the book so unique. It's one of the most unique features of the book. Dostoevsky is brilliant at vividly communicating what it is like to experience psychological and mental hell, <laughs> for lack of better words. Um Although most people have never done something so horrendous, although most people have never experienced such intense um, feelings of, of being so distraught, I think that Dostoevsky's ability to uh, put us into the shoes of Raskolnikov, so to speak, to uh, help us see through his eyes is one of the things which makes this book more immersive and more impactful than anything. And so... Moving on from that theme of reaping what one sows and having consequences to certain actions, another theme which was very pronounced in this book was the theme of poverty. And this is most most explored, I think, in a family that is in the book, the family of a man by the name of Marmeladov. And excuse me if I'm not pronouncing these Russian names right. I'm not fluent in Russian. Marmeladov is... Um, He's a, he's a person that Raskolnikov happens to meet in a bar, and he happens to be an alcoholic. The thing is, is that at one time, Marmeladov had a really good job working for the government as an official. But due to his alcoholism, and that's that's another theme in the book, it's, it's not as pronounced or as uh, major a theme, but it is also... It is also crucial to the story itself because Marmeladov's alcoholism is ultimately what results in him losing his job, falling from grace, and no longer being able to support his family financially. And so what is the consequence of this? Again, the major theme that I said at the beginning, um, the theme of reaping what one sows, there's certain consequences to certain actions or circumstances. The consequence of Marmeladov losing his job and no, no longer being able to support his family is that his daughter Sonia has to become a prostitute. And she becomes a prostitute to uh, financially support her family, to put food on the table. And to give a more vivid and clear picture of how uh, extensive or to, to the, the true extent of this poverty, I have to spoil even more of the story in order to communicate this. At one point in the story, Marmeladov, in his drunken stupor, he walks out into the road, he gets run over by a carriage, he has a gruesome and untimely death, and this sends his, his wife, which is Sonia's stepmother, into a mental breakdown. And that ultimately results in her dying. And so what ends up happening is that the little children in this family are forced to become orphans. And so you can get a clear picture at just how wretched, just how miserable, just how um, horrific these circumstances were for these people living in 19th century St. Petersburg as a poor group of people, as a poor family. And so, uh, again, I wanted to, to communicate that because Sonia was the single most 
impactful character, in my opinion. She was the one that impacted me the most in this entire book. And the best way that I can convey uh, that is by referencing a, a scene in the book in which Raskolnikov goes to visit Sonia. And he basically goes to confront and berate her about her lifestyle, about her choices and the things that she's she's done about her prostitution. And he basically says, how can you live with yourself? Uh, you, you would be better off dead. You should kill yourself because you have lived such a shameful, such a miserable, such a wretched life. And the funny thing about this, the irony in this is that Raskolnikov had already long committed the murder. He had long ago committed the murder by this point. And so in a sense, we get the impression that he is merely projecting his own insecurities, his own misery onto Sonia. And moreover, more ironic than that, Sonia is one of the most pious, virtuous, faithful, and all around um, excellent human, exemplary human being, exemplary human beings in this entire novel. And, um, I couldn't help while I was reading that scene in the book, I couldn't help but be reminded of a story from the Bible in which there were certain men who brought an adulterous woman before Jesus and they cast him, they ca they casted her before Jesus's feet. And they said, look, this woman was caught in the very act. The law commands that she should be stoned to death. And do you recall what Jesus's response was? He looked at every single one of those men and he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And then all those men being pricked and convicted in the heart, they, they walked away because they knew that they were sinners. They were able to recognize and see that. And um, afterwards, he, he goes to the woman and he says, go and sin no more. Right. And so you may be you may be wondering why I draw this, why I draw this parallel between that story and, and Sonia. Well, the thing is, is like at the end of the novel, Sonia no longer has to be a prostitute. She no longer has to do that in order to put food on the table. Fortunately, it ends on a good note in that sense. But I think um, the overarching point, the thing that should give us pause is that there are so many people in life who succumb to certain circumstances and are, um, I wouldn't say forced, but obliged to do certain things. And those of us who don't have to grapple with those things firsthand have the opportunity to judge them. We, and oftentimes we take advantage of that opportunity to exploit and to um, cast down condemnation and contempt on such people. But I think what Dostoevsky is trying to communicate is that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Just because a person lives a certain lifestyle, has experienced certain things, has done certain things, doesn't mean that they're totally lost, that they're totally um, hope, a hopeless and lost cause. Uh, there's a there's a future for everybody and there's the prospect of redemption and salvation and funny enough even more ironically Sonia ends up being the very symbol of salvation and redemption for Raskolnikov and if you read the book you'll you'll see exactly what I'm talking about at, at the end that is um, very clearly communicated but yeah aside from that um, the other theme that I'll mention about from this book and, and then I guess I'll go ahead and conclude the video because I don't want to, I think I've already exceeded my time limit. <laughs> um, there was, there's one more character that he, he wasn't quite as profound, but he was super admirable. And in him, I saw somebody worth emulating. His name was Razumihin. And I apologize again if I did not pronounce that correctly as I do not speak Russian and I'm not fluent at all. However, Razumihin he is the best friend of Raskolnikov. And the reason why I mention him is because he is the epitome of a loyal, dependable, honest, hardworking, supportive, helpful friend. Just everything that you would want in a best friend. He is the epitome of that. And the, the reason why it stands out to me so much is because numerous times in the book, Raskolnikov tries to dis distance himself. He He's irritable. He is annoyed. He he looks at Re Razumihin as a nuisance, despite the fact that Razumihin has done nothing t to um, warrant that behavior, to warrant that sort of treatment. And yet still, he goes to great lengths to try to support and help his friend Raskolnikov. He even goes so far as to support Raskolnikov's mother and sister whenever Raskolnikov chooses to withdraw himself and isolate himself further. And so... 
again, he he's one of the char- characters that um, he's very central to the plot. He's super important. He's not quite as imp- impactful or as complex as, say, Sonya or Raskolnikov. Um, but nonetheless, he was super memorable, and he's somebody who personally, when I look at him, I think, wow, this is somebody worth emulating. And so I've said all of this, and I'm on my way to conclude this this book review, but where does this bring us? Um There's a lot of things that I could say. A lot. I mean, I I could tell you that this was a, a phenomenal book, which I think I've already communicated. That I could tell you that um, the the characters and um, the themes that are explored by using those characters that is Dostoevsky's brilliance. Um, I could tell you that that has done something to change my perspective on life, and I think that I've communicated that well. However. There's one more point that I think I need to be more direct about, and that is that the reason why we read in the first place, why we should um, open ourselves up to to literature, to the love and passion of literature, is because every single one of us, even if we don't grapple with such things, with such circumstances ourselves, we are fundamentally the same. And chances are that at some point in life, we will find ourselves relating more and more to these fictional characters or characters like them in, in other works of fiction. And so um, I think it all the more important, all the more necessary to capitalize on any and every opportunity to, to engage in this sort of art and this sort of creative, imaginative material um, in the hope of bettering ourselves and the hope of... Um, improving our state in life and understanding what it means to live an excellent life. And uh, I think part of that is being honest and being sincere and um, facing the, the dark and the ugly, which I think this book does perfectly well. So in, in conclusion, I I think I'm rambling at this point (laughs) in conclusion, I would say that crime and punishment more than anything is an expose of the human condition, of the darkest aspects of the human condition, and um, a subtle reminder to us to not be so naive, to not be so superficial, and to not judge anything on the surface, but to contemplate it deeply, and to remember that all of us are susceptible to the same wretchedness and misery and sin and and hate and anger and angst and... um, existential crises <laughs> in life and um yeah it's it's a beautiful thing not something that we should underestimate so anyways thank you all i i appreciate you tuning in as always if you have any thoughts on this book please leave them down in the comment section below if you have any questions any critiques if you think i missed something super important i would love to know what did i miss um chances are that i I, I, will, I will recall it if you bring it to my, my memory. So anyways, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Until next time, bye-bye.